Moving on. Saltburn, Emerald Fennell, follow up to Promising Young Woman starring Carrie Mulligan. This is the first lead role in a major feature for my favorite actor, Barry Keoghan. And he is alongside Jacob Elordi in this film. Uh, This is releasing November 24th. You also have, we just mentioned her name. We're connecting dots here. Rosamund Pike that gets one line in this trailer. Uh, She seems a lot older than a lot of the characters. She almost may be a motherly figure in this movie. And then Carrie Mulligan, I think, is in this movie, Ricky Flex. I don't. I know you said we, we were going to do research here. You didn't see her on the roster? I, I'll double check right now, but like, I don't think I saw her name. Okay. I well, wouldn't be surprised, I'm, though, because so she's Carrie English. Mulligan, yeah. yes, and Emerald Fennell collaborated for Promising Young Woman, one of the surprise hits from a few years back. And we thought Carrie Mulligan was going to get her Oscar, potentially, for Best Lead Actress. Emerald Fennell gets Best Original Screenplay. Yeah, I just kind of intervene for a sec. Carrie Mulligan is in this movie. Okay, so you're right. You're right. She does not have a name in her I'm in the IMDb. Neither does Rosamund Pike, just for the record. But did you see Carrie Mulligan in this trailer? I didn't. Someone was saying that the shot of Rosamund Pike when she makes that really um, uppity comment <laughs> in the trailer, her moment. Carrie Mulligan's actually the person wearing a blue wig on the couch. Okay, that's probably why I didn't recognize her. Um, also, it was quick. Um, okay, I, I, it does fit. It, you know, it does fit. You know, and this cast is interesting. It has the Gran Turismo kid. Yeah, is that? I, I thought that was a kid from Gran Turismo. I just, it's weird seeing him in that movie and then Emerald, like a supporting role in Emerald Fennell film. Like to me, just, it's something doesn't add up. And he has multiple lines. He's in the ending scene, uh, smoking that cigarette. Uh, the first on, scene, too. Yeah, exactly. Like, so he's, and then you have uh, Richard E. Grant, who we've recently seen in Loki. He's in uh, this? Oh, yeah. He, yes, he is in this. Is he the butler? The guy who opens yes. the door? Yeah, I believe that's him. Yes. Nice. So yeah, Richard E. Grant. So like this cast is, you know, it's it's got some it's got some names here, and I I do think it's an interesting movie. Uh, do I think it's you know gonna take over social media? No, but I do think it's has that mysterious type of music around this kind of huge estate, this huge Victorian era castle estate in England, right? And it has that like with that mysterious music, it has that like euphoria type, the idol type modern splashes of music, like the tech, techno music splashed in to kind of make it modernized as well with these younger kids. So I do think the vibes are good here for a type of thriller that we don't see coming yet. Um, and I do think Barry Keoghan's gonna put in a good shift, sh- more than a good shift here. He's gonna put in a good performance but Alordi, they are hiding Alordi a little bit. I like he might be a scene stealer. Like he or, might be, he might be. Or a guy. if you're if they're hiding him, if they use that type of term, that doesn't sound like they're trying to like showcase him a little bit. Well, okay. Well, let me let me uh, let me. I think up. they're trying to hide the romance between those two. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Um, but also. I thought you were going to say because he was bad. I was going to say. Well, well I, I, that's what you could. That, that was just like the vice versa argument you can make. Yeah. Like he did have lines in this. Uh, I just think that like clearly this is Barry's show. But I do think like he already has that snide comment to Rosamund Pike. He's like, you should come to Saltburn. He has he's on the poster. You know, he he is the poster. And I know it's Jacob Elordi. Sick shot still. with the sunlight coming in, with the shirt off, with the drapes over him. Like he, that, that's an amazing shot. This this trailer is full of amazing shots. It's a very colorful movie. You brought up the Victorian era, like castle and everything. I thought this movie was actually being set centuries ago, and I think it's so cool that this is like Victorian aesthetic, but with like modern day euphoria. Like to me, that is pretty cool idea. Where it's like. This is almost like a Mr. R- uh, this is like a the talented Mr. Ripley type of vibe to it. This is bit. like Barry Keoghan as Matt Damon, and it's like Jacob Elordi as Jude Law. 
Like I think there's some obvious parallels there. Um, but yeah, I do, I do sense that euphoria vibe, but also this movie is so colorful. It's blasting off the screen. And I think this is, this is a lock for a couple of things. I think it's going to be cinematography. I think it's going to be there, right? The shot with Barry Keoghan looking out like with the drapes over him the morning after an absolute banger, right? There's shots of him like being, feeling like, I think it was like a bunch of like perfumes and glass that look like they're suffocating Barry Keoghan, like while he's at the table or he's looking at a mirror. I'm not sure what the exact shot is, but I think it's going to be amazing in that regard. And Barry Keoghan, my man, we've been waiting for a lead role. Right, we've been waiting. He gets his best supporting actor nomination, Banshees of Inisherin. The same year of Banshees of Inisherin, right? We got the Batman, and he is the upcoming Joker, right? And he is the best part of a Marvel movie in my eyes in Eternals. And although it's not a good movie, it's not really saying much. Like he's made for this moment. I can't wait for him to steal the show here and pull off that Mr. Ripley type of role. And I think um, Emerald Flannell had some very interesting comments about Ke- Barry Keoghan. And she was talking about how how interesting he looks, and that he, after watching uh, Yorgos Lanthorimos's um, Killing of a Sacred Deer, she knew she instantly wanted to have him in a movie because he provides a vibe that's unlike any other actor. And I couldn't agree more. Right? He's super unique. He looks super unique. He has this darkness to him, or this mystery behind him. No matter what he does, I can't wait for Barry Barry Keoghan and the aesthetic of this movie. To be honest. Yeah, I think it, it nailed it. And I think with go along with the Victorian era, it even has that like gothic style font throughout the trailer as well, mm-hmm. which I think hits, but it's also colorful. So it's not like a boring, like you think might think of the Victorian era. You have that font that's colorful. I think that's a good touch. And again, I'm just going to bring it back to Elordi because you're, you're going off on Keoghan, and rightly so. This is a big year for him. He's got Priscilla. At, oh, yeah. He's got Priscilla at the end of October. And yes, it's playing Elvis the year after Austin Butler absolutely nailed it. Um, and he's going to probably be made to look bad, but, and, but like, he's kind of perfect for that after euphoria, you know? So if he nails that nails, this supporting gig, I think he's on, on to bigger and better things. And he's doing that with Sofia for Coppola, Sofia Coppola and, uh, Emerald Fennell too, who's like someone that just won an Oscar and one who's some like some of the best at her game and Coppola then he's i think he's making moves here so this is big for him a lot of um i think we're gonna get a lot of female representation at the oscars this year between emerald emerald fennell uh greta gerwig right and um sofia coppola and i like this the elvis movie just to talk about it really quickly imagine being jacob alordi this weekend venice film festival and he's starring in an emerald fennell film and then a sofia coppola like he is murdering this. As if these two movies like hit critically, man, he is he is onwards and upwards. Oh my god! And um, yeah. uh, I, the the reason you know that the Elvis movie is going to be a hit piece is because you did you hear what happened to the rights of the Elvis music for this movie? Oh, they didn't allow him. No, the Elvis estate did not allow Elvis's music in the Priscilla movie. Dude, that I kind of think Alordi was he, he's a good Elvis then in this role, dude. He's not a likable guy. Nate Jacobs. Gonna, dude, yes, it's, I think he's gonna nail it. And that's a good sign that the movie is probably gonna, you know, it's gonna hit on some things that you know what? The general audience might not know about. And I think the trailer is not saying that whatsoever. So there's gonna be some. I don't know, Elvis, quote unquote, fans, not super fans, that super fans would know everything about uh, Priscilla and Elvis' relationship. But there's going to be some fans maybe walking out of the theater. 100%. And like how much like it's like the Baz Luhrmann movie was kind of like a party when you went to the theater a little bit, you know, not as much as like when you go see Barbie. But like it was still like people wanted to go see Elvis. That was like a huge draw of the movie and then an older demographic going to see it. So I'm interested to see what the reaction is going to be. But any other thoughts on Saltburn before we kind of wrap this portion of the trailer roundup up? I, I hope it does well at the box office. He has a lot of young stars, but also some older stars, Carrie Mulligan, Rosamund Pike. 
I hope it does well at the box office. And it's coming out at an interesting time, like around Thanksgiving. Uh, it's going to be coming out around the time. It's the same weekend, I believe, as Napoleon. So it's it's going to be – and, like, the Hunger Games. Disney has Wish coming out that weekend. So it's going to be a huge battle at the box office that week. I'm afraid that not a lot of people are going to see it. That's my also, only concern. Yeah, um, but this is this is an awards movie. You know, it's debuting in Venice. So it's like if it makes money at the box office, good. If not, it has other aspirations that are just totally different. But I got to shout out the song here because what a great song choice for this trailer. Uh, the Pioneers is the name of the song, and it's M83 Remix um, by Block Party. So this is I'm like I that this is what I like about it being like aristocratic but set in modern day in England but it has like EDM jams I'm like let's go let's get the house music going you see Barry Keoghan with the antlers on I'm just like oh we're getting we're getting we're getting crazy cultish we're getting cultish crazy. oh yeah that that is like the aristocratic lifestyle though you know it is kind of cultish Alordy. you're probably gonna get some like you're gonna get some darkness to this movie no doubt you know it's yeah. kind of hinting at that.